We are live on the air right now awaiting an update from Governor Hogan about the 500,000 testing kits of COVID-19 that he's acquired from South Korea. Let's listen in. It remains the most serious obstacle to safely reopening our states. Here in Maryland, we've been doing everything in our power to acquire more tests from the federal government. Unfortunately, unfortunately, we have also had to compete with every state in America in our attempts to procure tests from every domestic producer in the U.S. and from sources around the globe. As I said last week, adequate testing is one of the four critical building blocks of our Maryland Strong Roadmap to Recovery. Over the past 30 days, Maryland has successfully expanded our testing capability by over 5,000 percent, and we have now completed over 71,000 tests to date. Last week, we secured uh, 40,000 additional tests, and we invested two and a half million dollars to help the University of Maryland Baltimore Lab uh, use cutting edge robotics uh, to build up their capacity in order to handle up to 20,000 tests per day. All of that progress to date has been important, but this weekend we took an exponential game-changing step forward on our large-scale test testing initiative. We've been quietly working for a number of weeks on a confidential project called Operation Enduring Friendship. And on Saturday, the First Lady and I stood on the tarmac at BWI Airport to welcome the first ever Korean Air passenger plane a Boeing 777, which had no passengers, but which was carrying a very important payload of lab gun COVID-19 PCR test kits from a South Korean company called, called Lab Genomics, which will now give Maryland the capability of performing a half a million coronavirus tests. Uh, the 500,000 test capacity, which we have just acquired, is equal to the total amount of testing which has, complete, has been completed by, the, by, by four of the top five states in America combined. Operation Enduring Friendship was launched on Saturday, March 28th, when I asked my wife, Yumi, to join me on a call with Korea's ambassador to the United States, Lee Soo Hyuk. We spoke of the special relationship between Maryland and the Republic of Korea, and we made a personal plea in Korean asking for their assistance. That call uh, set in motion 22 straight days of vetting testing, negotiations, and protocols between our scientists and doctors, eight Maryland state government agencies, and our counterparts in Korea. We convene countless calls nearly every night. Sometimes it seemed like all night, working through language barriers and a 13-hour time difference. And at the last minute, we then navigated clearances across multiple U.S. agencies, including the FDA, the USDA, and Customs and Border Patrol, <clears throat> in order to complete this incredible mission for the people of Maryland. I want to sincerely thank our Korean uh, partners for assisting us in our fight against this common hidden enemy. Kamsamnida. Each part of this international collaboration was unprecedented. From identifying and vetting the, the uh, Korean testing company and getting the scientists in our labs 
to work through all of the technical details with the teams in Korea, to the complexities of the international procurement uh, contracts and processes, to figuring out intricate logistics solutions, like arranging the first ever Korean Air flight from Korea to land at BWI. It really was an amazing team effort. And I want to uh, personally thank uh, President Moon Jae-in, Prime Minister Chung, Ambassador Lee, and Prime Minister Hong, the Director for Public Diplomacy at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, who is here representing the Republic of Korea today and who was there with us at BWI on Saturday. Um, I also want to thank uh, Lab Genomics, who developed and produced the tests, uh, Samsung SDS for the logistical support, Korea Air for this uh, very special charter flight, the Korea Trade Investment Promotion Agency, John S. Connor Global Logistics, and our entire Operation Enduring Friendship team here in Maryland, especially Roy McGrath, director of the MES, who spearheaded our efforts, along with Secretary Ellington Churchill and the Department of General Services, uh, Deputy uh, Secretary Fran Phillips and the Maryland Department of Health, Secretary Greg Slater and the Maryland Department of Transportation, uh, Ricky Smith and the Maryland Aviation Administration, Major, Major General Tim Gowan of the Maryland National Guard, uh, Colonel Jerry Jones and the Maryland State Police, uh, Budget Secretary David Brinkley and the Department of uh, Budget and Management. And I want to give a special thanks to Sue Koo from the Governor's Office of Community Initiatives, who uh, stayed awake many nights assisting us with communications and who served as our lead translator throughout this entire process. Uh, I'd also like to thank our federal partners here in the U.S. for their co cooperation. But most importantly, I want to thank Maryland's First Lady, my wife Yumi. She truly is a champion of this Operation Enduring Freedom. You may know her as the first Asian First Lady uh, of Maryland, but she's also the very first Korean-American First Lady of any state in the history of the United States. Uh, and it's why we have, and we're so proud to have, uh, such a special bond with South Korea. In February, the First Lady and I worked with Ambassador Lee to arrange a, uh, for a reception at the Ambassador's residence in Washington during the uh, NGA annual winter meeting. It was the first time that America's governors had all gathered together at the Korean ambassador's residence. And it was a special surprise for us when President Moon appeared on a video screen to recognize our special partnership. And he said he was so proud of uh, my wife and he said that, he, uh, that they considered me as a Hanguk Sai, which means a son-in-law to the Korean people. And I, I considered it uh, quite an, an honor for him to say that that night, but I had no idea just how much that that would truly come to mean these two very long months later. Later this week, we will be introducing our Maryland Strong Roadmap to Recovery. This recovery plan has four building blocks, including a robust contact tracing operation, increasing our supply of PPE, and increasing our hospital surge capacity. And our team has been making significant progress on each and every one of these criteria. But the most critical part of both our recovery plan for Maryland and the reopening guidelines that the President introduced on Thursday is the capability to do widespread testing. Uh, the incredible success of Operation Enduring Friendship has not only put us on track 
to achieve that goal, but it uh, literally will help save the lives of thousands of Marylanders. Uh, this year marks the 70th anniversary of the Korean War. And my wife often says that she would not be here if it were not for the dedication and the sacrifice of the brave Americans who fought for the freedom of South Korea. And she and President Moon have both talked about the incredible debt of gratitude that South Korea feels toward the American people. Let me just say that after Operation Enduring Friendship, the state of Maryland owes an incredible debt of gratitude to the people of South Korea. Kamsamnita. As Maryland begins its reopening and recovery, Marylanders should feel confident knowing that we have done everything in our power, gone to every length, and used every tool and every resource at our disposal to defeat this deadly virus. May God bless the great state of Maryland, the Republic of Korea, and the United States of America. With that, I'd be happy to take a few questions. Yes. Well, so this is the first uh, step. There's still a whole lot of work to be done, but it puts us in a tremendous position. Um, it, the uh, health department can probably talk in greater detail about that, but uh, it, it sets us up to be able to spread these out across the state, work with different labs, and to utilize them in many different ways. This is still a part of our testing process. We have many different tests that we're working on, but it'll ena enable us to identify those who are sick and those who have the virus so it can help us isolate and do our contact tracing and keep people safe all across the state and help us with our reopening. When do you think, when will they start making their way out? We're going to start uh, right away, but it's going to take a while to go through all of those and ramp it up, but immediately is when it's going to start. We've already done all the protocols and done the testing and the labs have been working together, so uh, it's going to, this is a long-term testing strategy, and that, this capability is going to take a while, and it's going to help us uh, continue for many months to come, but we're going to start right away. Governor, how much does these tests cost? Uh, will this flatten the curve, demolish the curve, and how quick is the turnaround? Well, we're very pleased that we have been flattening the curve. It's a little bit why we're behind, a couple weeks behind everybody else, and why our numbers aren't as high as other places. But... Um, when you flatten the curve, you also lengthen the time frame, so it's going to take a while, but I don't know if it's going to demolish the curve, but it certainly is going to enable us to open in a much safer way and to help us to protect a lot of folks. Um, I believe the cost uh, is about $9 million for these, uh, this, these tests. Uh, as you know, we announced about a week ago that uh, we potentially might lose $2.8 billion by July uh, 1st in revenue. So $9 million to try to, you know, keep hundreds of thousands of people safe and protect thousands of lives and to get our economy back on track seems like a pretty worthwhile investment. Governor, are these tests everything that's needed right away, or do you still need tests and things like that? Well, it's a great uh, question. They don't have everything that's needed. There's, it's a very complex, uh, you know, set of things that goes into the testing, so you need the lab capability, uh, you need the swabs, you need the reagents, and they all have to kind of work together. As I understand it, there's about nine steps involved in the process. Um, a couple of these steps we've uh, contracted with and have received from the two companies in Korea. Uh, other things we are, have acquired and, and or are acquiring, acquiring from the federal government and for, uh, from other uh, sources here in the U.S., but it's going to take a while to ramp up all of the things that we need to utilize all of the tests. Sorry. I th no, I think, uh, I think that the federal government, uh, President Trump had talked with uh, President Moon about a federal supply, but I don't think, to my knowledge, they were not negotiating with any other states.
Well, we, we've been, we had a great uh, conversation, uh, I guess, fr I think Friday with uh, Governor Northam and Mayor Bowser. We're all working together. Everybody, all of our numbers, uh, we're watching and hoping to see that downward trend. Um, we're, we're, we're not quite there yet, uh, but we're all going to work together when we start to see the numbers go down. When we've got all those other things ready, then we'll, we're all anxious to get our economies opened up as soon as we possibly can, and if we can do it in a safe way. And we're going to do so in cooperation with our neighbors. It's possible. It's one of the things that we'll be discussing later in the week. Uh, you know, it's, uh, if, you, if you look at, the, you could possibly do things in different regions or different uh, par parts of the state, but we, what we don't want is to have one place open, everybody rushes over there and then infects that county. So there's a lot, to, a lot of thought that goes into that. Certain areas don't have as bad of an infection rate. It may be because they haven't done enough testing. Uh, or, you know, what we don't want is to have the neighbor next door come over. If you open up everything, then they're going to be flooded with more infected folks. So as I pointed out, this... Uh, this, this half a million tests is more than uh, the four of the top five states in America have done so far in the, in the entire uh, COVID-19 crisis. So it's a huge, huge step in the right direction. It's not the end of it, though. We're still searching. I mean, we got another 40,000 tests last week. We're working on multiple different kinds of tests for different reasons, and we're going to continue our efforts on, in all those. This is not the end of the process at all. Um, and we're going to try to be able to be in a position to test as much as possible. We've ramped up our labs. We're continuing to ramp up the lab capability. 10,000 was a very aggressive goal, but my, and I'm, they're going to get mad at me for saying this, but I think I'm going to try to blow through that and do maybe a, a 200% of what the, their aggressive goal was and try to get up to 20,000 tests a day. Aaron. Aaron. Um, so I've had discussions with leaders uh, in uh, Congress in both the House and the Senate, both Republicans and Democrats, about lots of different issues, um, including we had successful negotiations over the weekend uh, regarding uh, a compromise that I hope is going to take place in the next day or so, where we can move forward on all of the funding on the, the 3.5 uh, CARES Act funding to come out to get the PP. PPP, get our small business uh, money out and help the hospitals. The president committed to our request for $500 billion to the states in, last night in, our, in, a, in a phase four, which is quite an accomplishment. Um, there's a bipartisan bill in the Senate to do just that with Republicans and Democrats. Um, there's been discussions about testing and how important that is with, uh, with folks in Congress on both sides of the aisle, but not, not really uh, at liberty to share a lot of the details of those discussions. It was a good meeting. Um, the, uh, the vice president, the, the coronavirus team was laying out. It was mostly uh, an update. They gave us uh, detail on all of the, uh, a, a list of all the labs that are in our state and uh, in each of the states. Uh, we already knew where the labs were. Uh, most of the ones on that list were actually federal labs, and they said these are labs in your state. Uh, but they were uh, yeah, NIH and FDA and uh, Fort uh, Detrick and, uh, and things like that. So I, I pointed that out to the vice president. We've been pushing to get NIH to help us with testing for more than a month now. Uh, but it was a productive meeting overall. Um, we had updates from uh, uh, the members of the team about uh, some, of the, uh, some of the progress they were making on swabs and reagents and a couple of things. And I thank the Vice President, for his, on behalf of the governors, for uh, helping to agree to uh, support the states in the next funding bill. Um, I thank them for, uh, you know, some of the progress that they've made over the past couple of weeks. And uh, I pushed uh, to get the Treasury Secretary to respond to the governors with, with respect to flexibility of spending on the previous funding bill, which we were expecting by the end of next week. And he promised to get that done by the end of, end of today. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Well, I, I can't really, I don't want to speculate about why, but the, the, the federal government has been trying uh, and has been helping with some of these things. They've now instituted the Defense Production Act, which we pushed for, uh, NGA did, along with some leaders in Congress. They're now using that to produce more swabs, which everybody's short of. Um, they used it for ventilators, which we've made progress on. Um, but why we haven't made more progress on testing, I'm not sure. But uh, they, the administration made it clear over and over again that th they want the states to take the lead, uh, and we have to go out and do it ourselves. And so that's exactly what we did. It was a concern for us, and uh, we were just happy to have successfully landed that plane at B VWI. And don't want to get into all the details of how that came about, but that was a big part of our concern. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you've just been listening to Governor Hogan give us an official update today. Maryland has now expanded its testing over the past 30 days. You heard him there confirm the 500,000 tests that came from South Korea. And so far, the state in all has completed more than 71,000 tests to date. Now, the governor also announced that he project for weeks now, 28 days. It's called Operation Enduring Friendship. And through this partnership, as you heard, Maryland has now a half a million COVID-19 tests from that company in South Korea. The governor and the first lady met the first Korean air flight to land at BWI that was chartered there and delivered that package on Saturday morning. Hogan says Operation Enduring Friendship will now help save the lives of thousands of Marylanders. And of course, we'll have everything you need to know on the coronavirus in Maryland over at our website, WJZ.com. Look under top stories for a list of resources, plus the most important links and numbers. They are under quick links. We are back here starting at four with more on today's press conference and all you need to know about the coronavirus.